Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with my lovely wife. Maureen Anderson. We and are talking about the promises of God yeah. and entering into the promised land. Yes. And we're covering we really, material out of this book. Yes, it's called The Damaged DNA. This is through the book of Joshua, which uh, Joshua, uh, that book, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Joshua, is really a picture of our new covenant. Mm. And so, so anyway, this will help us understand how to live in the new covenant and how to get free of the damaged DNA. Marilyn Hickey wrote the foreword to this book. So you would so enjoy this book. God bless you. Here, Amen. let's start. Be right back. We're back and we're talking about the entering into the promised land. And of course, the book of Joshua is Joshua was Yahweh, which means he saves. And so is Christ. Mm -hmm. The anointed one taking us into the promised land. There's a process that was set up yes. for us to learn. He said, don't let this depart from your mouth, this mm -hmm. book, because this book is and the instructions you, and directions. Yeah, and if you meditate on the word of God day and night, you will make your way prosperous Who? and successful. You. We'll make yes, your way and it also and says be strong. So in the new covenant, in our promises of God, we're to be strong and we're to be courageous. We're not to be full of fear and we're not to be dismayed. No wimpy Christians. And now those are commands Amen. of God right. in our lives. And so we are talking about now being uh, courageous, and yeah. we've gone through so much, and we're just picking it up right now as they have just crossed over the Jordan, yes. which is the destroyer, and the water had been abated all the way back to the city of Adam, which means the sin was cut off yeah. all the way back. The yeah. enemy's power was cut off yeah. all the way back to Adam, all the way to the present where they were, and all the way to the Dead Sea, the destruction of. So it's and a so past, past, present, and future taken care of by the blood of the Lamb yeah. and the enemy under our feet. Yes. And now we're just at the point where God said to them, pick up the 12 tribes, one out of each tribe, were to pick up a large stone and put it on their shoulder yes and carry it across on dry ground yeah. and set that as a memorial 12 stones that would be a memorial that tells them don't go back enter into his rest yes. and, and no longer go back to the law no and that now you're entering into a new covenant mm. so the old testament was pictures of an outward working of the inward working now of the new covenant. And so we see that this is what it is, is that we, uh, you die to the law. The Bible tells us that we die to the law. That's Romans 7, yep. uh, 4, that we might belong to another for him that was raised from the dead. And of course we know we belong to Christ Jesus. Wow. And we bear fruit now unto God by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, not by the law. And uh, so we see here, that about the dust, you see. Oh no, that, that's no really dust nice because when feet. the priests walked across and the heads of the tribes picked up the stones, they went and there was no dust on their feet. Yeah, and I it's know. critical because now the enemy is under our feet. Yes. And the dust that is using here, you can go to Genesis chapter three and verse fourteen, and it talks there when the curse came on Satan for the fall of Adam and Eve. He said, you shall be cursed above the cattle and livestock of the land, which means they ate of life, and you shall eat the dust of the earth, which means you will eat of death. Mm -hmm. You will eat nothing alive. In, in other words, what in the ancient Hebrew, it means that whatever man makes good for nothing now becomes what? The enemy consumes. Yes, it consumes. That's it. his assignment yes, yes. in these days. Yes, yes. And so it's really important for us to understand that. Yes. And then we go on to Gilgal. Gilgal is a wonderful place, uh, not an exciting place for men, but it was the circumcision of the flesh. Yes. And all of the men were to be cut free from the past of Egypt and the wilderness. And this was a circumcision of the flesh or all that happened in the flesh yes. in Egypt to them, to the tribes, to them. Yes. But it was the picture of what it says in Corinthians. Paul said it is no longer under the new covenant. Yeah, that it is, is no longer the circumcision of the flesh. Now it is the circumcision of, of the, the heart. heart. And There's that's a cutting away of past yes. stuff, which is in your book. Yeah, it's in Romans 2.29 says that circumcision of the heart in the spirit and not of the letter. And we see now that when God said to Abraham, 
um, it was Abraham was changing his name to Abraham. He said, you know, there would be the circumcision that would happen, and that was a covenant that was being made, a blood covenant now that they had a covenant with God. Well, now we're seeing here that as they enter into the promised land, uh, as they're going in, they circumcise, and so that is a picture now to us in the promised land that our that the, the circumcision of the heart by the Spirit of God, and that is in our covenant that we have with uh, with Father God, with Christ Jesus. We're in a covenant now with them. So it's the in Spirit the new covenant that's taking by the blood. care of the junk yeah. and not the letter of the law no. that didn't work anyway. No, it didn't work. Amen. And so this is what Gilgal was all about in that preparation of the heart for them to take Jericho, which we talked about in the past. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. but we're going to re reiterate some of it just so you have a, a, a good understanding that Jericho was the tithe of the land. Yeah. And, you know, you call this the footprint here. Of yes, God. actually. So what is this? Good. Thank you well, for reminding tell me. Tell us about that. Um, where they entered in uh, just below uh, on the River Jordan, they entered in on a small area that was the opening between uh, Benjamin's tribe of Benjamin and the tribe of Manasseh, and it was the opening into Ephraim or the area of Ephraim where Jerusalem is and in the, H in the oldest maps. And it is the footprint of God, which is in the Torah talks about the footprint of God. But the understanding of the footprint is it doesn't happen until we see the New Testament, that it is the church. It's the picture of the church because yeah. it is the center of it was uh, uh, Jacob, who slept on a rock, yeah. and after waking up from the rock, he saw the ascending and descending uh, of the angels moving forward and after, and it was the picture of what Jesus said, on this rock I shall build my church, and he said, this is what what you bind on earth is bound in heaven, what you loose on earth is loose in yeah. heaven. And so this was the picture, because when Jacob woke up, he said, wait, now on, I will tithe. I understand tithe. that the tithe. the tithe looses what's in heaven, heaven. and looses it to earth. Yes. But if you don't tithe, then it's bound in heaven and it can't get to earth. And people don't understand the power of the tenth, which is God's first name, yeah. which is what He added to Abraham's name, who was the first one to tithe in the new in the in the new covenant. Yes. And and it is the letters Ah. He added A-H to Abram's name and called him Abraham. And Sarah's name, Sarai, went, became Sarah. And that is God's first name or Yod or Ah. Uh, or it is what we call every time we stop and stutter and say Ah, uh, people are calling on God and yeah. they have no idea. Anyway, but that is also, what A-I stands. And then you can find it in Nehemiah, Isaiah, and all kind yeah. of God added his name to so many. Yeah, and isn't this the tenth? Isn't the first name the means? His the name tenth? is Yond, which is the tenth letter of the ancient Hebrew, yeah. the tree of life. It's Christ Jesus. It's the anointing. It's the word of God. Yeah, and so anyway. That's a, a lot of we just yeah. gave you a lot of information very fast. But nonetheless, from there they were to move through to Jericho and travel around it simply six times once every day for six days, which represents leaving the law of 6,000 years of the existence. And on the seventh day, they were to travel around uh, seven times on the seventh yeah. day. And then everyone faced, if you can imagine, three million Jews standing and traveling all around and the terror probably set up and the tremors that on the earthquake and all of the stuff that took place at that moment when they all turned and shouted, three million jobs, they shouted and the human voice took the on power. power. The power of the it speech. It is the picture of the power of human speech. Now for you and I to speak the word of God in power and bust yeah. down every wall, every stronghold, move every mountain, change every single thing in your life is now been given to the power of life and death is in the tongue today. Yes, and so it's really Ooh, interesting because so it sir. says this, it goes on to say life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes, but also it says you shall eat the fruit of your speech. And so Ooh. what what I'm saying is what I will harvest in my life. And so if Those I'm are the saying, seeds you're planting. Yeah, so if I'm saying I'm weak and oh, I'm tired today, or I'm not very smart, or I'll never get ahead, 
then five years from now, I will be living in my words. I never have enough. Or my, oh, my body just doesn't seem Gloom, to operate. Gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, yeah. dark, deep, all that kind of foolishness. Yeah. Put but those it, words to death. Anyway, uh, we, we don't want to project the negative into our future. We want to project life. Yes? Yeah, that's what we want to do. Yeah, I mean, now we've been listening to some with Joel, and that's yeah. been really good yeah. teaching. Yeah. Share yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah. Well, anyway, what it's really important for us to realize that uh, we have the power in our words. We don't go by what we feel. We don't go by what we see. The Bible says we don't, you know, we don't look at what we see, but we look at what we don't see. You know, that's 2 Corinthians 4, 18. There you and go. so if I'm focusing and speaking and say, you know, saying those things that what I'm seeing that's happening around me, then I will produce that. That that's, is the fruit of my words. That's it. But if I declare to look at what I don't see, mm. that is the word of God, the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus in my life, then I will eat the fruit of those words. And so, so the Bible says, don't, you know, if, you know, don't, the weak, you know, don't say I'm weak. Say that yeah, the don't. weak say that I'm strong. Mm. And, and so wealth is mine, health is mine. And so the covenant is mine. And so the joy of the Lord is mine. Jesus is Lord in our life. And so the peace of God is mine. Oh, I'm not Lord. stressed out, I'm at peace. And so we have to say these things. And so it's so important to see that. And also that the walls that were uh, are so thick, they're um, how Three th chariots wide. Ch yeah, ch yeah, the, that thick, the, the spoken word di did not prevent, prevent those walls from falling. They fell down because we spoke the word of God. And historically, it's the yeah. oldest city in, in uh, written history. And, uh, but besides that, they have found those ruins that they have rebuilt on. And today, because Jericho represents also where the tithe came, out of the promised land and to, to be put in the storehouse. Uh, today, Jericho is all locked up. You can't get and in. And Christians it. cannot go well, into that. And the so again, the, yeah, so they control or it. Or the Philistines, which are the Palestinians, yeah. and control so, it today. Trying to control the tithe that is the tithe of the promised land. And of course, it doesn't have had that effect, but that's what they're thinking. And so when we talk about Jericho, it is, God said, everything that's in Jericho needs to be go into the treasury of yeah. the Lord so that it can spread the gospel, virtually build the kingdom of God yeah. yes. in yeah. essence. Yeah. And so we've covered that a little bit in the past, but we thought we might cover a little bit more. Yeah, of it and today. talk about too, Rahab. Oh, tell them about yeah, that Yeah, Rahab, story. that she, uh, she believed God. She believed that the promised land was for the children of God. And so she hid the spy, she protected them. Um, and uh, they said yes, that they would rescue her and her family if they got into the house and they had a, a red rope, which represents the blood covenant hanging from her window. And so she was the only family. That's a part of the wall that didn't collapse, yeah, yeah, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and she's the only family that was rescued out of Her whole household. I know. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, uh, so that out of that, she came into the bloodline of Jesus. She's actually yeah. the Rahab, the, the chief prostitute. Yeah, a, Gentile. Yes, the chief prostitutes in the bloodline of Christ because Christ died for all. Oh, that's that what a picture. Him. Whosoever yeah. calls on the name, there is no limitation on culture, background, history, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Whosoever calls on the name. And we him. know that Jesus had the blood of the Father God, so Father there God. was no sin in his blood. Exactly. But he cleansed out any of the sins of the forefathers, cleansed that out. That's a good the point. The power of the blood. Amen, because yes. he had no sin. Yep. Absolutely. So, that, so then we see from that point, there's something that comes up next. Yeah. And what was that? They were sent 3,000? Yeah. Do you want to say, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, AI. Three, yeah, AI. I thought about AI, and since that's yeah. something new called artificial intelligence, I don't know how that applies here, but I've done some research in the Hebrew trying to find out information, and I don't have complete information on it yet to be able to talk effectively about what AI and how it's spelled in the ancient Hebrew and what it actually means. But it is related to the effects of Achan taking of the tithe in the 
city of Jericho. Yeah. So what happened is that they did not, this is one of the places where Joshua did not seek the Lord as to what to oh, do. Come on, that's they right. had to go to Ai, and the Bible says this, and, uh, and let me see, it's uh, Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all that's your right. ways acknowledge yeah. him, and he shall direct your path. Mm. Well, he did not seek the Lord, he trusted in his own understanding, and so they said, hey, EI is a small place. Uh, we can take that easy. Let's just send 3,000 men up there. Well, when they went up there, 20, 26 or more were killed, and they were defeated, and they had to run back uh, to Joshua in their defeat. Well, Joshua had no understanding of what happened. So he got the Ark of the Covenant, and it says here uh, that, uh, you know, and so he just says here, let me find the scripture. And so he said, uh, you know, what happened? How come we didn't we didn't win? Why did we lose? And, and, and the Lord said to him, because of the sin of Israel, and that unless you deal with this sin, you are under a curse. Ooh, and you'll rough. not proceed. So they had to find out what the sin, who stole articles, uh, out of the treasury that should have been for God in, in, in Jericho. And so what we find here that they, they did their research and they found out it was Achan. And so they had to destroy Achan family and everything to get the curse off of them that they might proceed to take the promised land. And so, and so it's, there's the a picture there. The biggest thing there seems yeah. like he's, he didn't ask the Lord before he no, sent he him up. No, nope. Had he asked the Lord, the Lord would have said, said no, wait no. a minute. You better a, wait. They're and sitting take, in the camp and you yeah. can't win. Mm -hmm. And so if he had done that, it, and there's a couple of times that yeah. Joshua doesn't follow the Spirit. That's when we right. don't follow the leading of the Spirit, uh, and that's why we should follow the leading of the Spirit in everything we endeavor to do now in the New Covenant, because mm -hmm. he will lead us to life. Yeah. Yeah. He will not lead us to yeah. death. Yeah. Amen. Well, one of the things that I, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, we want to go into going back to AI, if you didn't mind. Yes, let's Talking do that. about that. So after they got everything right, dealt with Achan, they inquired of the Lord now, right. and God gave them the plan, right. and they defeated Ai. And they took the king, and they, uh, it was really interesting, this is what they did. But here's a picture again of the death, burial, and resurrection of yep. Christ. And the king of Ai, this is uh, Joshua 8.29, we, he hung on a tree until evening. So they killed him and they hung him on a tree. And he was there until evening. As soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they take, take down him. his corpse down mm -hmm. from the tree. And so this is real important because it was that if, if you hung, hung somebody on the tree, crucified them at the tree, that they had to be taken down before the sun set or there would be a curse on oh, the wow. land. And so we see that Jesus hung on the cross. And so the sins, like Achai was a picture of, of, of the strongholds that were in, it was in that place. And the king was that, that stronghold that would keep you in captivity. So when we're in the promised land, taking the promises, there are generational curses, there's iniquities, there's transgressions that are passed down from forefathers, or the things that we have gotten involved with that now keep us in a prison. They can be strongholds, they can yes. be addictions, alcoholic addictions, drug addictions, sexual addictions, and, and we're held in that captivity. But what did they do? They took that stronghold and they hung it on the cross. Now tell them about and what we then, were talking about this morning. Yeah. The power. The of power the of the cross. And what's happened yes. in America and yes. taking down the cross and churches that don't display the cross. cross the because it offends people and that's top. ridiculous. It was that, designed to yeah. offend people. Yeah. So anyway, the cross, the Bible says this, and we see this in numbers where, uh, where the, the people had sin, and so there were snakes that were biting the people. Yes. And they hadn't gotten into the promised land yet, and Moses was running the crew, and so he went to God, help God, the people are dying, they're crying out. And God said to him, take a pole, 
and make a bronze snake and hang it on the pole and that when they look at that pole, that bronze snake the on the pole, the cross, they yeah. will be healed if they look at it. Not everybody would look at it, but those that looked at it were healed. Well, we say this also in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, and I'll Gee, paraphrase it. No, but just, you did good. yeah, Go just paraphrasing it. Wait, I got it right here. Okay, I wrote it out. It says, and this is what it says, having canceled the charge of our legal uh, indebtedness, our charge against us. So, so where the law was written and held against us because we didn't, you know, meet, meet the mark of the law, it said he took it away by nailing it to the cross. So he canceled that that was against us and nailed that to the cross. So our sins, the sickness, the disease, the curse has been nailed to the cross. That's Get what it's this. saying it's here. Really important. Get and this. having disarmed the power and authority, he uh, made a public spectacle of them and triumphing over them by the cross. And so, as I see this, when I got hit with rheumatoid arthritis, yeah, crippling very, very fast. They said I'd be in a wheelchair within six months. And, and it's incurable disease. There's nothing they can do for you. And so unless God does something, you know, I'm crippled. And, uh, and of course, it kills you. And so, ultimately. but ultimately, that's what it does. But anyway, I, when I would speak the word and I see myself running and doing skiing and doing things I couldn't do uh, every day, that I would do did. that and see that. But I also would see this rheumatoid arthritis hung on the cross, nailed, nailed to, to the, the cross, cross. Couldn't come back. nail it to the cross, couldn't come back. And so the power of that, of course, in two months, I was totally healed. And, and that's been over 30 years now. So the power of the cross. And so the cross is powerful. Paul said in Philippians 3.10, I want to know you, Christ, and the power of the resurrection and fellowship with your suffering. Well, when did he suffer? He suffered at the cross. Of course, he suffered in hell also. But fellowshipping with it, acknowledging that. The suffering and, was on the cross yes. because that was and the, the flesh Bible says that we're an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ if we suffer with Him. Well, when, I, it doesn't mean I'm going to suffer here. It means suffering with Him and meditating on what He went through to take my sins, my my curse off of me, and and acknowledging that. That's and, the truth. Yes, that's the truth. And so this is so powerful. So just think about yeah. for a moment. Um, why nationwide, in some cases worldwide, uh, there was a movement back in the 70s, 80s, 90s that it was important to take down the crosses because of its offense to other people, other religions, whatever yeah. it was. And this little 1% of people were able to influence churches to actually take down their cross. Now, the question I would like anyone with a common sense at all, why would they want the cross down? I mean, okay, it offended them, but what's the offense? What What is the problem? Because the cross still has power, and you better get it back up. If you're a pastor and you don't have a cross, you need to get it back up. Yes. It is, it is, there is power and people need to be able to take their stuff to and the cross. And look at the and cross. And they need to look, there was a scripture that says that. Yeah, look, you gotta look, at, look at, at it at and they were healed. And realize the power of the what healing took in it. place on that cross. That's what offended them. That's what offended them. It has power and they don't want that power in their life. They want to continue in their own sin and their own crap. Yeah. We got to get the cross back in America. It needs to stand in our courthouses. It needs to stand in our parks. It needs to stand in our churches. It needs to be everywhere that we can have. You know, there used to be in crosses in homes. They had places that they went to pray with over the cross. I'm, Get yes. me on the subject yeah, here. but anyway, power let's go. In power the cross in the cross and the blood. Yes, and cross. in the blood, the blood, of course. 
and uh, it's so important to look at the cross. I like to look. At, I like to look at the cross at church and at home too when I'm worshiping and praising God, and and looking at Thanking that God and saying this done. situation maybe that that is not what I would like in my life. I see it at the cross. I see Jesus. You took that at the cross. It has no more power in me Amen. or whatever. And I, you know, it's just honoring that cross, honoring it. And then they took him down at the, from, the, from that Amen. tree, yep. and they, he went into the entrance of the gate of the city, and, and, and then they raised over him all these uh, heaps of stones were put on him at the gate entrance. And so this is a picture to us that when we, uh, when we get free of those strongholds in our life, that yes. we see that now, that uh, we put the stones on it, that it can't come back on us, but the stones represent the Word of God. Now, I got free of that situation. It's dead. It's at the gate where the, the opening was there. Now it can't come back on me, but now I put the stones on it because I fill that area now with the Word of we God. Living yeah, stones. because the Bible says if Life, you clean your dead. house yeah. and then you, you don't put something to fill it up, uh, it's going to be worse. So you need to be sure you put the word of God into that stone. situation Beautiful. that you got free of. Hey Amen. We need to oh. talk yeah. about salvation yeah. for yeah. somebody out there who's never received Christ as the Lord and Savior. With, and you want to get into the promised land. We You start yeah. simply by receiving yeah. Christ as your Lord and Savior and begin the process of understanding yeah. the word of God. Yeah. Getting into a good church that preaches the word of God, God. only and, and lives by the truth. That's the kind of church you want to be in. But just receive Jesus. He is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. This is how you get there. So just pray this prayer with me today and allow God to come into your life and change your life, change your direction, and bring you into the promises of God. They're all filled with the goodness yeah. of God and have no religion in them. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we encourage you to let us know. Give us a call. Tell somebody you received Jesus today. He said, if you acknowledge me before man, I'll acknowledge you before my Father that's in heaven. So you just make sure you tell somebody. I'm going to tell you what, your life will never be the same. Praise God. And we just encourage you now to get the book right now here that it talks about coming into the promised land and also helps you to understand the damaged DNAs that could be in your life from dysfunctional behaviors within the family, how to get free of it, and uh, the pictures that are, all, that, are, that are all the way through the book of Joshua. Marilyn Hickey wrote the foreword to this. This book will help you to understand the new covenant. You know, the book of Joshua is a book that, that helps you, the outward pictures of things, there are symbols there to help us to understand our life now in the new covenant and how to- Getting free of addictions, get, yeah, getting free of Yeah, to things. walk through it victoriously in faith. And we're gonna go into that more next time, so 